Hello everyone. This is going to be a video tutorial to show you how to run a deep learning job on Compute Canada using a very simple Python project and job scripts. So this video is meant to be watched alongside the instructions that I've posted on my blog, which I'm showing here. Uh, and this, these instructions go over all kinds of setup instructions, like how to set up your environment, SSH keys, uh, installing Git, and so on. Uh, and I'm not going to go over those instructions in this video. I'm just going to uh, show you how to um, create a new project or remove an existing project to Compute Canada, and then to run it successfully using a job script. Uh, so firstly, if you haven't read the blog post or the instructions, please do so now and then come back uh, to this video. I'm going to be using the Windows subsystem for Linux Terminal, uh, which is, as the name suggests, Linux-based, uh, specifically Ubuntu-based. So these commands should be applicable to you if you're using Linux or Mac as well. Uh, and if you're using Windows, then I strongly suggest you also use WSL and the associated uh, and an associated terminal with it. So the first thing I'm going to do on the terminal on my local machine is create a new virtual environment um, using the virtual env Python package, which I give the instructions for how to install uh, in my blog post. I know I'm needing Python 3.8 for my project, so I'm going to tell virtual env to use Python 3.8 and I'm going to direct the virtual environment to be installed in my home directory, uh, and it's going to be called py3h-cc for this particular example. Next, I'm going to activate the virtual environment. Um, if you're using bash, then your activation command will be slightly different. I'm using fish as my shell, so that's why I have to use the activate.fish command. Great, now my environment has been activated. I'm going to create the project directory. And for this example, I'm just going to call it Compute Canada Tutorial. And the first thing I'm going to do uh, with my project is initialize a Git repository within it. Now I already created a remote repository on GitLab, also called Compute Canada Tutorial. And I'm just going to simply link the local repository with the remote repository using the instructions git provides or gitlab provides um, and if you use github these commands will be more or less the same now with my environment still activated i'm going to use pip to install all the python libraries and modules that i'll need for my example project so even though i'm not going to use them i'm going to install pytorch and Torch Vision just to show you that you can install and run them very easily on Compute Canada. Now I haven't scripted any of this, so that's why you can see I'm making some errors, but uh, and sort of debugging them on the fly. And that's a great learning experience too. In addition to PyTorch and Torch Vision, I'm going to install NumPy, Matplotlib, and um, the standard scientific computing packages that are very popular with Python. And finally, I'm going to install weights and biases as well to show you how to track changes and um, observe changes when your script's running on Compute Canada. So now all those um, packages have been installed. I can view all of the Python packages installed in my environment using the freeze command, and then um, uh, save all of these, uh, the output of the freeze command into a text file called requirements.txt, which will be the first file within my project repository. Now I'm going to run Visual Studio Code using the code command, and I strongly recommend that you use this code editor as it has the capability of remotely editing code on Compute Canada, and of course you can also edit your code locally on your machine. So with Visual Studio Code, I'm going to create a new Python file. I'm just going to call it uh, main.py. 
EY to stick to convention. And after installing weights and biases, it's also important to log in via the terminal by using wand b login. Now for my um, Python file, this is the program that I've written. It's a very simple script that's importing a bunch of uh, standard libraries, as you can see. It's initializing the weights and biases uh, logging by using the init command, and I'm telling it directly which project I want to uh, log under. And I'm also supplying my username and API key. Uh, I'll provide the API key later off screen. And so um, my weights and biases information can be authenticated on Compute Canada. And then these next few lines are a simple for loop where I'm uh, just generating random accuracy numbers and then every 50 iterations logging them with weights and biases. And so I'm logging both the epoch, which is the iteration in the for loop, and the accuracy for that epoch, which is, of course, randomly generated. And so you can see I use the weights and biases log command, which takes in a dictionary as input to log this information every 50 iterations. So with my simple uh, example training script, I can test it out in the terminal on my local machine using Python. Clearly, I, I made an error here. And that's because I forgot to put the log command in the weights and biases call. So I'm going to fix that now. Great, it seems to be running as expected. I'm just going to see if it runs past 50 epochs and correctly prints the accuracy. Yep, seems like it does, which is great. So I'm just going to kill the program here. And as you can see, weights and biases um, synced the changes online correctly for the first two iterations. It logged both the epoch and accuracy correctly. Now I'm going to create a new file, which I'm going to call jobscript.sh. And this will be the script that you will run on Compute Canada to submit and run the job. The first thing that we need to include in this script are the requirements for our resources. So I'm going to tell Compute Canada exactly how much memory I need, how many CPUs I need, um, and what other things I'll need for this particular job. If you did want to request GPUs, you would use this command here, um, GRES or graphical resources, I believe. Uh, and then if you're using Cedar, you can specify which GPU you want. But since I'm not going to be using it, I'm just going to remove it from here. And then you can also include this email command to um, specify that you want any updates for the script to be emailed to you. So this will tell you this will send you an email anytime the script starts or um, fails or finishes, you will get a notification about it. And that's very helpful uh, so you don't have to keep uh, anxiously checking it in your terminal. Great, so these are all the sbatch commands uh, that I'm going to use. I give more examples on my blog post as to different kinds of options or commands that you can use to request resources. And finally, I'm going to uh, include this uh, command to run my program. Now in between, I'm going to need to do a bunch of different things on Compute Canada, but I'm not going to specify those yet because I don't quite know what that will be until I try and reproduce this on Compute Canada. So I'm going to use the git status command to check what new files there are in my uh, repository, and then I'm going to add them and commit the changes and push them to the remote repository. Now I'm setting a new uh, new terminal, and I'm going to use that to connect to Compute Canada using the SSH command. I'm going to change into my project folder and then clone the repository 
using the git clone command and the correct GitLab URL. And so you can see that the changes were correctly pulled from GitLab and I have now all my code and scripts that I had on my local machine on Compute Canada. So now I need to set up my Compute Canada Python environment in the same way so that all the code can run correctly. So I use the module purge command first to make sure there are no modules loaded. And then I load Python 3.8 uh, as I am using that for my project. And I also lo load the SciPy stack, which contains many um, of the computing uh, scientific computing libraries uh, such as NumPy and matplotlib that are needed. Next, I create a virtual environment in very much the same way as I did on my local machine. And I'll call it Py38cc here as well. And now I'm going to activate it to make sure that any further Python packages I install will be in the correct virtual environment. So as you remember, we generated a requirements.txt file previously, and I'm going to um, use that file to correctly install all the necessary Python packages so that our Python environment can be recreated perfectly on Compute Canada. Okay, now all those packages have been installed. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code and connect to Compute Canada through it using SSH so that I can remotely edit um, the files on Compute Canada. I'm doing that so I can edit my jobscript.sh file correctly um, to include the instructions for loading my Python environment before running the script. So I'm just entering my password here in, in code uh, to connect to Compute Canada. And you can see that here are my Compute Canada files and folders um, and the Compute Canada tutorial example folder which now I can edit directly. So I'm just going to include uh, some necessary commands here. So uh, for example, we'll make sure that we're in the correct directory uh, before we do anything else. And that we load Python 3.8 as well as SciPy stack and activate the virtual environment before we run our main.py file. Okay, so now I can save the file. And remember, this is saving it on the Remote Compute Canada server. And I can verify that these changes are saved by outputting the script. And you can see that um, the changes I made in Visual Studio Code are reflected in the output in the terminal. So now, with the job script complete, I'm ready to submit my batch using the sbatch command. So I say I type in sbatch and then navigate to the job script file. Now here's an error. It says that I'm missing the this initial line which specifies which shell to use. So I must um, I forgot that, but I have you have to include that line. And I want to use bash, not um, sh. So I'm going to change that to bash at the beginning of my script. And I'm going to delete that extra space. Great, so the job was submitted correctly. So you can use the sq command to monitor how your job is doing. For example, here it says the job is still waiting to start and that there are two hours left. Um, if the job is started, you will see that 
state is changed uh, and the appropriate amount of time left will be um, will be stated as well. Once the job finishes, it will no longer be visible in this SQ command. Now, if the job um, was running, it's going to produce an output file, which is off the format slurm, which is the job scheduler hyphen and then followed by the job ID and uh, dot out. And that is a log file of everything that's output to the terminal. So now my job, I'm, I've skipped time, my job has started and finished, and I'm going to use the cat command to show you that um, there is uh, what the output is. So here you can see that the script ran well. Um, our Python script printed the accuracy every 50 iterations as we have programmed it to do for 1,000 iterations. And you can see also that weights and biases successfully synced all the changes to uh, the online server, which we can directly view in our browser from our local machine. So here uh, is the data from that run. As you can see, both accuracy and epoch are logged and plotted correctly. Now we have to remember that we made changes to the files on the remote um, Compute Canada service. We must make sure to sync these changes correctly using git. So if we head back to the terminal, we can go to git, uh, or sorry, we can use git to um, commit the changes to the tracked files and then push them to the remote repository, which we can then uh, sync on our local machine by using the pull command. Great, so now everything is up to date, which I can check using the status command again. Wonderful, so thank you for watching. That was how you use Compute Canada and how you submit a, uh, a job on Compute Canada, in this case, a very simple pretend deep learning script. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to run an interactive job and specifically how to run Jupyter on an interactive job for deep learning. See you then.